Okay, may I call on Brother Ron for our opening prayer? Um, Elder Ron Pop, please. Good evening po ulit. Let us all pray po para po makapagsimula tayo. Uh, Heavenly Father, once again po, pinasasalamatan ka namin sa pagkakataon na ito na tinipunan po kami, natapos na po sa linggo, Panginoon, pero kami po ay nilulubos mo ng kalakasan. Salamat po sa uh, pagpatnubay uh, at uh, pagprotect uh, sa amin, Lord. Thank you, Lord, para sa lahat po na narito ngayong gabi. Uh, nawa po ay buksan mo po ang aming mga isip at nat- aming mga puso para po sa tatanggapin namin pong mana na i-deliver po ng aming um, exhorter ngayong gabi, si Deacon Louis Romero. Uh, Basbasan mo po siya, Panginoon, ng katalinuhan at ang uh, maging... Uh, ng boldness po sa pagpapahayag po ng mga salta mo o God at uh, sa amin pong lahat na wapo ay ma-digest po namin ito at uh, magamit po namin sa pang-araw-araw na yung pamumuhay tulad po ng nais mo po sa na gawin namin Panginoon. Thank you rin po sa mga kasama namin na uh, uh, pa-join pa lang po sa Uh, amin pong prayer meeting at salamat din po Panginoon sa platform na ito na patuloy po namin na uh, na-enjoy para sa gawain at na uh, para sa kapurihan mo o God. Uh, keep them safe O Lord, yung mga papawi pa lang po sa mga tahanan at uh, nawa po Panginoon ay uh, Bigyan kami ng kapahingahan ngayong gabi, kapahingahan ng aming katawan na ugad. Lahat po na ito, Panginoon, ay amin dalangin sa iyo. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Thank you po. Be- oh. Amen po. Amen. Glory to God po. So, uh... um, tatawagin ko naman po ngayon si Deacon Brother um, Louis um, as our tonight's exhorter po. Thank you po, uh, Sister Margie. Uh, hello po sa lahat and hope uh, you have a blessed weekend po. And uh, today po, uh, we have I have prepared uh, the lesson about uh, Luke. 16.1 to 9. So, from the previous lesson po natin, if we can uh, uh, go back dun sa ano natin, uh, pinag-aralan po natin is about the parables of the lost sheep, the parables of the lost coin, and the parables of uh, the lost son, which mainly po uh, our Lord Jesus Um, is telling the story para marinig po ng mga Pharisees. So, it, it is meant uh, for the Pharisees to to hear. Though to mga Pharisees po na to, uh, they are very, very keen in listening kasi nga they wanted uh, to find out kung meron silang pwedeng i, isang pang uh, case against our Lord sa mga sinasabi niya. So, uh, I will share this screen po. So, nakikita po ba yung screen? Amen po. So, the topic for today po is about uh, the parable of the Truth Manager, uh, Luke 16, verse 1 to 9. So, ang kinuha kong uh, version ng Bible is from the ESB. So, sa ESB po, uh, the title is uh, written as the parable of the dishonest manager. Verse 16. He also said to the disciples, There was a rich man. 
there was a rich man who had a manager and charges were brought to him that this man was wasting his possessions. And he called him and said to him, what is this I hear about you? Turn in the account of your management for you can no longer be manager. And the manager said to himself, what shall I do now? What shall I do? Since my master is taking the management away from me, I am not strong enough to dig and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am removed from my management, from management, people may receive me into their houses. So some uh, summoning his master de master's debtors one by one, he said to the first, how much do you owe my master? He said, a hundred measures of oil. He said to him, take your bill and sit down quickly and write 50. Then he said to another, how much do you owe? He said, a hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and write 80. The master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness, for the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. So uh, the parable of uh, Luke, on 16, uh, verse 1 to 9, is we're talking about uh, um, a relationship between the owner and the manager. So let's uh, dig deep, uh, let's dissect uh, verse by verse. On verse 1, we're, we're talking about management. So nung po palang almost, I don't know kung almost 2,000 or more than 2,000 years ago, um, when our Lord Jesus uh, tell the story of the parable, we can we can simply see na noon po ay alam na ng Panginoon na mangyayari itong mga bagay na to, which we can, at this moment po, uh, in our time, uh, we, we have seen this kind of, uh, this kind of wrongdoings, not only from the government, uh, from the corporate world, or maybe we, we had also experienced this in, in our own, in different ways. So there, there was, a, there was, there was, a, siguro nung una, uh, the, the, the owner already, uh, nung finard niya yung manager, parang binigyan niya pa ng, ng ilang days to settle the, all, the, all the accounts. So, ganito yung nangyayari ngayon sa atin. Kaya lang, uh, kung ating, pag ating pag-aaralan, these kinds of, ano, these kinds of uh, doings, we can already distinguish between uh, the difference between the believers and the non-believers. Definitely, the non-believers po will not do this kind of ano, things. Sa mga trabaho natin, we have the education, we have the... Uh, we, we, we are trustworthy, unlike some mga non-believers po. Uh, they are more on uh, material wealth. Kumbaga yung mga worldly, worldly wealth na tinatawag. So, on verse 3 and 4, the, the fired uh, manager, kasi he needs to secure himself. Eh. So, he... He, you know, he managed to to make a plan and also a manipulation. So, sabi niya, anong gagawin ko if I if I will be removed from my from my management? Uh, I don't want to dig. Siguro nga dahil sa yung trabaho niya, maybe it's a country director or kung sa papanahon po natin ngayon, country director, manager, or... Diba? So, ayaw niya marumihan yung... Definitely, he can dig. Uh, ayaw niya lang yung, yung hard, hard work or yung hard, hard job na tinatawag yung marumihan yung kamay niya or step down from, from the post that uh, 
we have right now, then definitely ayaw niya pong uh, magmakaawa. So there's a there's a pride. Uh, siguro nga dahil sa dating maganda yung trabaho mo, dahil mataas yung position mo, you have the pride not to, uh, not to beg uh, for help. So the the manager have uh, have master plan uh, the wrongdoings. Na mababasa po natin sa verse verse five and six. So sa verse five and six and seven, he done a good deed for an evil intention. So what he done is he summoned uh, all the debtors that. Uh, uh, one by one, then he asked the first one, how how much do you owe my master? Then sabi po nung debtors, a hundred measures of oil. Then he said, uh, take your bill and sit down. So galanti po itong manager, no? pinaupo pa. Take your bill and sit down and quickly write it in. So it's a 50% discount yung binigay niya. Hindi ko lang po alam kung binigyan pa ito ng refreshment or, or something. <laughs> sa, usually, sa mga ganyan, mga ganyan business dealings, there's, there's a refreshment in gold. Then, he said, to an, 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 he said to another, how much do you owe? The other one said, 100 measures of wheat. He said, take your bill and write 80. So before we jump po, uh, into the other other verses, I just would like to to clarify that the good deeds of the of the manager uh, is authorized by the owner itself. Kumbaga, authorization of which man because uh, at the current point in time, hindi pa po siya natatanggal sa position niya. So whatever decisions that he made. Uh, kung ano man yung mga steps na gagawin niya, uh, it only, kumbaga, proxy pa rin po siya ng, ng rich man or ng owner. So if we go on the verses, eight and nine, uh, before we, we jump po to sa uh, verses ng eight and nine, let's, ano po, let's, to for us for uh, for us to see the the whole picture, let us calculate the uh, the figure that that was mentioned on the parable. On Luke sixteen six, it says nine hundred gallons or about three point four tons of olive oil. So siguro sa panahon natin ngayon, tung olive oil, olive oil lang yun pinangluluto natin or uh, di ba pinalalagay sa salad or something. But during the time uh, of our Lord, during the time Ancient times, this this olive oil are are very ano po, are very important, very uh, lucrative. Paano po gano po ba siya ka lucrative? Olive oil was used in Olympics. So imagine mo for the whole Greece or the whole Roman, whenever there's an Olympic, ang papremio po nila is olive oil. Victorious boxers received 60 amphoras of Athenian olive oil at the Panathenai Games, roughly equal to 600 gallons. This was a valuable price. The boxers are framed by partly veiled person personification of the Olympic Games or Olympias and a bearded referee. So, ganun po siya ka-importante, ganun siya ka-lucrative. Then, aside from that, ano po ang uh, katumbas ng olive oil during the time of a lord? A man's salary is one drachma per day. So he needs three years of hard work to buy 600 gallons of oil. So if we have 900 gallons, that uh, more or less approximately uh, five years of hard work para lang magkaroon kayo ng uh, 900 gallons of olive oil. Then, Let's take the figure, figurative. Kung oh, ano, ano, po, kailangan, ano po ba yung halaga nitong 3.4 na, na liters of olive oil. So how much is the biblical drachma worth today? Purchasing power parity, PPP, calculation are very difficult. An 1885 paper by William Goldwyn estimated that ignoring purchasing power 
The weight of silver that had been in the Salonic talent was at the time worth approximately 877 United States dollars, making a drachma worth 0.14 cent in 1885. 4.76 in 2022. So nobody knows based on the moon using information concerning the event, the most uh, probable dates are 30 and 33 AD concerning Pontius Pilate's action and other factors. I believe it was April 33 AD. That means 1,985 years ago. So ito medyo matagal na po. Uh, kung tama po yung pagkakaalam ko, medyo matagal na walang wala ang ating Panginoon uh, when they calculated uh, the, uh, the value of a drachma. A drachma po, uh, I have uh, some of the drachma coin here. Uh, pero hindi ko na po, we can Google it po para makita nyo. Uh, a drachma po is consist of uh, silver and some, some are gold. Ito po yung uh, monetary ano ng, in, ancient, in ancient times. Ito po yung mga pera na pinanggagastos nila. So, if we calculate po, 4.76 dollar multiplied by number of years, which is 1,985. A drachma uh, in the market uh, for today, lalo na po kapag gold dyan, is around 9,448 US dollar per drachma. So, aside from that, uh, another value po dyan is yung uh old or yung age ng coin so it is uh, more on collect collectibles and uh last time uh yung coin po ni sa assassination ni Julius Caesar was sold for for a million dollars so on Luke 16:6 a measure sometimes translated bath was just over 8 gallons about 30 liters this a large depth, about 875 gallons or 3,000 liters of olive oil worth 1,000 denarii, over three years pay for a daily worker. So 1,000 denarii po in 3,000 liters of olive oil. So one denarii, you have three liters. So calculation, kung tama po yung ginawa mong calculation, 3,406 liters divided by three, then the 900 gallons of olive oil is 1,135 denarii. One denarii, uh, the conversion is 1.1 drachma. So if we multiply that uh, by 1.1, 1 .1, we have 1,248 drachma multiplied by 9,448 uh, 9, for the current uh, conversion. Uh, we'll have 11,799,292. So nung nagbigay po na 50% to manager, uh, it, it is 5,899,646. So ganito po kalaki yung discount na binigay at ganito po kalaki yung utang na loob na uh, uh, utang na loob po ng debtor to sa manager. So if we go on on which naman po uh, measure in Greek they call it chronix or conics that is approximately one quart or 1.1 liters so the 100 measures of wheat is 100 cores a core was a hebrew dry measure for grain flour and between 10 to 12 bushels about 390 liters this was a huge amount of wheat representing the yield of about 100 acres a depth of between 2500 to 3,000 denarii. Again, let's do the calculation. 3,000 denarii multiplied by 1.1 conversion and drachma. We'll have 3,300 drachma multiplied by current value num uh, drachma at the current time, 9,448. So it it is 31,178,420%. Is 6,235,680. million two three five six eighty. So ganito po kalaki yung so tama po yung ano just this na an exact amount or I'm, I'm saying na tama yung amount but to give you the, the figurative kung gano'n po kalaki yung utang na loob or yung discount na binigay ng manager. So on verse 8 and 9, kung babasahin natin, ang sabi sa verse 8 and 9, the master commended the dishonest manager 
for his shrewdness. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, they 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 may receive you in the eternal dwellings. So the rich man commanded the manager. Kumbaga commanded in in Sinai, in the dictionary is praise. Kumbaga pinraise niya yung manager. Tulad po na sinabi ko kanina, uh, the manager, pray, uh, the rich man praised the manager because uh, he have done the good deeds. Yung nga lang, uh, yung good deeds na ginawa niya, uh, kumbaga kinawa dun sa, sa, ano niya, sa possession niya. And kanina sinabi ko rin po, the, whatever action that the manager did in giving discount is uh, legal. Kasi during that time, hindi pa po siya tinatanggal sa position niya. So, kumbaga, nag, uh, nag, nagkakaroon pa lang po sila ng mga accounts, yung mga chinecheck ng accounts, yung kung tama yung mga figure na, na binibigay. Then, from from this, we can see the, ano, the difference between unbelievers at believers. But definitely, unbelievers, they they are more on uh, uh, worldly wealth than believers po they are on ano, eternal, eternal, kumbaga, um, dun, dun po, meron po silang guide, meron silang guidance, takot po silang gumawa uh, ng masama. Though, we can clearly see that on the verse 8, sabi, sabi nga sa verse 8, for the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. So, hindi po sinasabi dito na wala pong uh, sons of of our Lord na hindi gumagawa ng ganitong mga kasalanan. Definitely, nakakagawa po tayo ng mga kasalanan gayan or may mga nagagawa pong kasalanan yung mga kasama natin sa as Christian. But we have the, ano po, we have the chance to to turn. We have the chance to repent from all the wrongdoings that we've done. And uh, kumbaga, we have the the time to ano, to to be on on track. Then on the verse 9 po, ang sabi po ng Panginoon, and I'll tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, they may receive you in eternal dwellings. Again, the, the difference between the, unri the unbelievers and believers, believers, uh, the unbelievers, they they worship money, they worship the wealth. So, hindi po yung sinasabi dito, make friends. So, hindi po, hindi po yung yung uh, ginagawa ng mga ng mga tao sa laba, uh, ng mga unbelievers that they do partying, they drink all night until morning, uh, they they go to to some ano uh, pinagbabaw like casino or sometimes kahit yung mga simple bagay lang po if you if you go and meet your friends outside then mas minsan na pa, na nabibigyan pa natin ng time yun uh, to attend than to attend the ano, the the ministry that we have in church. So, uh, ang ibig po sabihin sa verse 9 is if you have the means of, ano, if you have the means, like like you have, you have the means to invest, invest in the ministry, invest in, uh, in, um, what do you call that? Invest in uh, evangelism, then kung wala naman po tayong sakto lang yung ano natin uh, it doesn't mean that you need money to ano to help the ministry or the church uh, we can we can spend time we can use our our talent we can use our own resources na nakikita po natin ng marami sa mga kapatid natin na nandito sa GICN so they don't mind uh, the work they don't mind the time they don't mind uh, yung pagod as long as na ginagawa nila yung nakakalugod sa ating Panginoon and yun yung nakakapagbigay ng ng kaligayahan sa kanila in serving serving God. So this parable uh, was was been given by by our Lord sa mga disciples niya, hindi na po sa mga Pharisees, sa mga disciples sa mga disciples niya um, to guide them na we don't dwell 
on the on the material things na meron dito sa sa mundo but uh we look forward beyond uh for the eternal uh eternal kingdom or eternal salvation but this verse is not it's not all about the the good and bad doings of the unbelievers and believers if we go down if we continue po, uh, to the topic that uh, if we continue to the verses from 10 to 13 ang sabi po sa verse 10 one who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much and one is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much if you if then you have been faithful in the unrighteous world who will entrust to you the true riches, which is the kingdom? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. So ito po yung pinaka-context ng parable. So if I trust you in a little, definitely I can trust you in much. Sabi nga, if you're not being faithful sa mga unrighteous wealth, then paano pa kita pagkakatiwalaan sa eternal wealth, which is the salvation? And if we can see, if we can go back dito po sa, sa illustration na meron tayo ngayon, if you can see this is stadium, so we claim and we believe that uh, the grace of our Lord was given to us as a gift for our salvation. Yung sinasabi po sa verse 9, if we do manage to to bring back soul sa Panginoon, then directing po yung time, there will be the one who will welcome you sa kingdom. And sa pagbabasa po or sa panonood natin ng mga preaching uh, from different uh, pastors, Christians, pastors, ang sinasabi po nila, once you're in the, in, inside the, the coliseum, let's say this, in the kingdom, you're safe. But is it much better for us na we do uh, good things, we do uh, some, some sacrifice in the ministry, uh, we evangelize, we help the the church in any in any other things. Then when when your name was read, uh, you mga good deeds mo, isn't it that ano uh, very grateful that we will be sitting in, let's say in the middle of this in this uh in this col uh, coliseum or in this uh, stadium? Definitely we cannot sit on the the ringside. Kasi alam naman natin kung sino mga nasa ringside. But uh, advancing your seat nearer to, to our Lord or kumbaga uh, the more you do good things mas lumalapit ka sa ating Panginoon is a eternal uh, eternal achievement so I hope uh, everyone can right medyo nahihirapan po akong magsalita or mag-explain try my best uh, to explain the, the parable of, of Luke for on 16 verse 1 to 9. And uh, I hope everyone po uh, benefit from this lesson. Salamat po ng marami sa inyo and have a good night po. God bless po, Deacon Louie. God bless, Deacon Louie. God bless po. God bless po. God bless you. Well, galing, galing. God bless you. God bless po. God bless po. Ang pagbabalik ni Elder Mike. Thank you po. Dito pa rin ako sa labas. Dito pa rin pastor sa labas. Uh, ang, ang pagbabalik ni Elder Mike. Pagbabalik. Wala. Dito ako naman. Hi po. Gandang gabi po sa lahat. And God bless Brother Dewey.